And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Today we're talking about Bazaar, which is a game from Sid Saxon. This is a 2011 uh, edition of this from Griffin Games, but actually this game came out many years ago. And in it, it's a game in which you are basically trading. That's what the game's about. You're trading, though, with the game. You trade in jewels to get more jewels, or you trade in more jewels to get fewer jewels, and you're trying to get enough jewels to buy wares. Uh, it has this theme of a bazaar, but it's very abstracted. But at the same time, the trading does come through a little bit. Some really nice components. Let's look at them. At the beginning of the game, there are 10 market cards, these big, large cards, and you're going to pick two of them at random and place them in the middle of the table. The rest of them, you're not going to use. So these cards are going to de determine the market for this game. You're also going to take four stacks of five cards each here. These are the wares, and then you have a whole pile of uh, wonderful glass stones over here that were stolen from the fishbowl. Uh, so we're going to look at these market cards because this is really the crux of the whole game here. At the beginning of the game, everyone's going to roll a die that shows all the different colors involved in the game, except for a genie lamp, which is uh, wild. So you roll the die, and I start with a green. Now, what I can do on my next turn is roll the die again or try to make one of these deals. Well, there's nothing I can do for a single green, so I'll roll the die again. Now I have a blue. On my next turn... I can say, oh wow, my, 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 I can roll the die again, or I can trade the blue in to get a white and a yellow, or I can trade the blue in to get two whites, a green, and a yellow. Oh, come on. Two whites, a green, and a yellow? That's fantastic. Well, you might think so, but it's not as great as it sounds. Because sometimes what you'll do is you will do something the opposite. Maybe in my next turn, I'll trade a green and a white in to get a single yellow. You say, why, why would you do that? Well, the next turn, I'm going to trade in a green and a white to get another yellow. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to complete one of these wear cards, this one in particular, because it needs four yellows and a blue. So if on my turn I can complete one of these cards, let's say I have uh, five yellows, a blue, and a red in front of me, and I say, oh, I can complete this card up here. So what I do is I take the four yellows and the blue that are needed to complete the card, and I pay them, and I finish the card. I take the card in front of me. Now. How many points do I get for completing that? Well, that's determined by looking at a scoring card. This is a starred card. Yay, stars are wonderful. And then I look at how many gems I had left over after I spent. I had two left over. So on a star card, when I have two gems left over, I get three points. See, if I had had three or more gems left over, I would have only got two points. But if I could do it down to zero, I would get eight points. So many of the cards are not starred. Several of them are starred. As the game progresses, once it goes into the final round, the star cards change to double stars and the regular cards change to starred cards. But that's basically how the game works. I'm just going to be taking those and you keep your score on another stack. And after all the cards from two of these stacks are gone, then the game is over. And whoever has the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, whoever has the most cards, the wearer's cards, is the winner. There's a few variants where you can play solitaire or make double purchases, but that's basically it, where you're trying to manipulate these to try to get the gems that you have to the amount where you can buy this as close as you can and have nothing left over if possible. It's All right. This game is really interesting because of the trading aspect of it. Uh, when we played this, we, we played very different styles. Uh, I had another daughter, Amy, and she basically just traded as soon as she got something, she traded it. She didn't care if it was one or two points. She just traded it. So, and I sat there trying to get it to the, so I could trade in all five of mine for one thing and have nothing left over. But that takes a lot of work. Uh, I had to, to keep doing it, and everyone was like way ahead of me. But when I got it, I almost caught up right away. But then trying to get it again, and I just I didn't do very well with my strategy <laughs> of only going for those. What do you think of this game? I thought it was kind of fun, and like my dad said, it felt like bizarre like an actual one um i also thought the rocks were really cool and we found this one actual third marble yeah an actual marble that didn't really get into the right shape but it was a lot of fun 
rolling it around anyway. And also the game, um, I thought it was kind of all a lot of luck into it too. Like when you roll the die, you're like, well, oh, please get the color. I never really got the color I wanted. Well, yeah, there is some luck, but what's really interesting is that this game is a very, to me, it was a very strong brain burner. I really had to sit there and say, whoa, okay, if I trade this for this, then next turn I can trade these for those, and then I can trade that for that. And so, and every game's gonna be different because you're gonna have two different uh, market tiles. But wow, I mean, I sat there and just like, oh, I don't know what to trade for what. Okay, I'm gonna do this for this. And a four player game was kind of chaotic. I think it is much better as a two player game because by the time you had the things you want, someone bought the thing you wanted. And so mm. that can be kind of a pain. Um, so overall, I did enjoy it but it's a much more thinky game than you might suspect upon looking at the box. So uh, we go into it ready to really do some, some almost uh, mental gymnastics when playing this game, I think. Um, final thoughts? Awesome, this game is really good. All right, I like it too. Uh, I don't love it and I wouldn't play it in all situations, but when I'm in the mood to really exercise my brain in trading, bizarre is what I wanna play. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs>